So the purpose of this uh, study is to get a thicker wall in vase mode. Though this looks thick, it's only because we're zoomed in. It's only 0.8mm and I really want it to be 3mm. So onwards to simplify 3D to see if we can get a wider wall. So what we're doing here is we're doing a flow rate test and each of these six outline wall spiral vase mode boxes have different settings. As you can see over here in Simplify 3D I have uh, six different cubes which you can see on the screen and over here I've set up uh, different processes for each of them starting at and just concentrating on the uh, tool head I'm just changing the extrusion multiplier and the extrusion width as we go through so that's the first one and then ending in the final one here and when I actually run this and create the uh, G code My hope was that I could see thicker walls happening, and I think they are on the back row of three. But anyway, we'll let it run, and it's going to take it's going to take an hour. So we'll come back then, and I'll add to this video, and we'll see what the actual result is with some Vernier calipers. is the rare row and the square on the right and uh, let's just see if I can get over the top of this at some point here we are we can see that the back one is having the most dramatic effect that I want and the uh, value that changed that was actually putting in the uh, extrusion width uh, wall thickness I'll show you that on the screen because uh, words don't often relate to the values so let's go back to the screen and zoom out a bit and let's just exit this and go into the value that I really want and that's the extrusion width at the moment you see it here at 1.6 millimeters and that's the one that's having the obvious effect um, of making the wall a lot thicker so we'll be back to look at more progress in a moment. So this is set to run to be um, 10 millimeters high, and I don't think the test needs to run that long because I can already see uh, the best results happening. By the way, in order for this to work, I've got a um, super volcano uh, heater nozzle here, and I'm uh, running the temperature at. 230 degrees um, so that the melt zone can cope with the amount of material I'm hoping to push through. So I'm going to stop it here and I'm going to go and change my settings to concentrate on the uh, the rare row of those squares where it's the um, extrusion width seems to be the best variable for my solution to get a thicker wall for vase mode. So back shortly. So I was going to get the Vernier calipers on it, but I think if we just zoom in, we can see that uh, square number one was, you know, a standard print with a 0.8 nozzle. And as we go right up to here, we can visually see that it is a lot larger when the uh, width is set to 1.6. So that's what I'm going to set up now. So I've set those up again in uh, Simplify 3D and this time I'm going for 1.4, 1.8, 2.4 which is wrong really, I should make that 2.2. I'll change that anyway for the print but you can already see that that the wall thickness is, is getting a lot thicker as we go along. So I'm kind of doing this test to see what my printer can cope with and uh, then the, what I'll have to do after this is not just have one wall, but um, not test two walls, but I'll have to print a solid layer to see how this wider wall affects the, uh, the base layers and the distance between the um, top.
top and bottom infill layers which I know I've had problem with in the past but anyway back soon so one thing I have noticed is that the uh, prints going quite slowly and I uh, usually set my prints to 90 millimeters per second which is quite a fast print but they're not happening here so I think Simplify 3D must be uh, working out flow and uh, volume to speed of its own accord which is really helpful So one thing I have noticed is that uh, it's printing very slowly. Uh, usually I have it set to 90 millimeters per second speed and simplify 3D, which is uh, quite quite fast. And here it's just chugging along slowly. So I presume that simplify 3D had uh, adjusted for the huge amount of uh, flow and material output, which is really great. And so it's finished the print and I said I'd go in with the old uh, verniers and measure it. Um, so this is running at a ballpark of, yeah, kind of around the 2.2 millimetres that I wanted for that one. I would say that is going in at about 1.8 and this one just quickly reading it about 1.4. So I think I'm 0.2 millimetres off on most of this, but generally wider is what I wanted and now the next thing I'm going to move on to is the bottom layers and see how good an infill we are getting on those bottom and theoretically top layers that you can set to. So back shortly. So it's off and on the first cube <laughs> it's a bit like the races and this is what I was worried about, the uh, adjustments to the uh, line width are going to affect the distances of the uh, first layers or the bottom layers and of course the top layers as well. I don't expect it to be amazingly smooth with the 0.8 nozzle but um, yeah I'm going to have to do a lot of tweaking here to just to get those lines closer together but we'll stay tuned as it uh, increases the line width uh, to get an optimum and also we'll see what the second and third layers look like as well. Back soon. So it does look like there is some kind of overall percentage working here. Maybe my lines are need to be 30% closer together. Maybe I'll be trying that next, but you, you can see what the problem is here. I'm going to let it run anyway, um, and I'll probably measure these distances and try and get some percentage and relate that to the, um, the extrusion line width. So it's finished those first uh, bottom layer steps, and uh, looking at it closely, you would think that you'd need to adjust it by 200%. Those kind of gaps look relatively square holes. But anyway, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a run where I'm going to relate the actual layer width to the extrusion width. And, you know, just out of curiosity really I just want to see what happens there I'm kind of doing this because I know as you start to go up in bigger nozzles all kinds of other dynamics start to play and I'm just trying to do a long-winded calibration to uh, kind of get the knowledge and learn what affects what so this is the result of uh, making the line gap wider in relation to the wall width and it's not working so I'm just going to kill it here because uh, there's an experiment that's gone wrong. It's almost like I can't control it to be honest. I really can't see any change that the line width in the uh, top bottom fill 
is having any useful effect at all. Okay, I'll admit it, I've cheated. I've uh, found Simplify 3D just would not give me the control I needed for multiple layers. So I've moved now to Super Slicer and I will show you shortly, well after this one's finished, what values I brought across from Simplify 3D and uh, where I put them into the Super Slicer interface because we know we had already learnt about flow rate for walls and uh, uh, extrusion width and we had values and percentages for those but we struggled with this uh, first layer infill um, and I just could not find a way to do it and simplify 3D even if I use uh, multiple processes you know use one process for the first three layers where the bottom layer was and then another process for the walls and even that wasn't looking good either so um, I've had to abandon that slicer and I'm using a uh, Super Slicer, which, a, which is a version of um, Prusa Slicer. Anyway, there you are. Back soon. So it didn't go well. And that whole uh, Simplify 3D thing was uh, stressful in testing. Uh, but Super Slicer started to work better ish so I'm giving that a full test with the vase in a moment so just really to compare what was going on over in uh, Simplify 3D I was concentrating on these kind of settings but the real problem that I had was the kind of first layers and subsequent layers I couldn't find a way to get enough control on that but over in the world of uh, Super Slicer, in their width and flow control underneath their printer settings, we've got a whole host of um, extrusion multipliers that we can play with here. And these are the ones that I've been uh, playing with to get a really nice dense lattice for those uh, base layers and maybe top layers and then quite a high value for the perimeter and external perimeter and all of this is uh, working in the uh, phase mode up here under perimeters and shell and I'm on spiral phase mode so um yeah sometimes it is the slicer which uh, affects what you're doing and uh, sometimes it just doesn't have enough controls to uh, get to it happy to be proved wrong but uh, in this particular instance where I want to have a vase mode with a very thick outer wall um, that's the way I've chosen to do that I've not chosen to do it as a hollow print with no uh, top layers and you know two walls instead yeah that's kind of a way to get around it but I like vase mode because it's a constant print and it gets rid of the top stops and starts of each layer and all those kind of lines and scenes is really what I want to get rid of on a project that I'm working on. So um, next thing I'll show you is a, uh, a small vase mode test and then I think this bit of uh, random thoughts and uh, ideas um, on 0 0.8 nozzle uh, should be done and hopefully uh, helps or maybe inspires others. I would look forward to your comments and um, if I've made any glaring mistakes, I'll come back and improve it. Just a little update on the vase mode test or vase mode test. Quite nicely. Some anomalies and wobbles, but some perfection as well on the outside looks good a bit of problem maybe with those bottom layers that could be tweaked later but I'm not sure it's that important the top layer looks gorgeous uh, that's got some ironing on it set up in super slicer I can actually see how to turn that off it looked off but yet it was still ironing 
some of this might be just due to our light in the room as well. But yeah, it's looking quite nice. We'll let that run and finish. But then I'll last some up at the end. So we've got to the end and it's it's not too bad. It's not bad for a 0.8 nozzle extruding it over 350% <laughs> to get wider wall layers. Kind of works all right. From a distance, not too bad. <laughs> 